Well, the greatest train that ever run down America's railroad track was the Orange Blossom Special. Bring him a baby back. From New York to Miami, you could see them drivers roll. But the Orange Blossom Special don't stop Waldo anymore. Hey, everybody. It's Lydia, the Tally Stitcher, back again with Floss Tube number seven. Um, welcome back to my channel if you are new here, or uh, you're welcome if you are new here. If you're old here, you're still welcome. <laughs> um, my little kitty cat just ran up to say hello, so that's why I'm distracted by her. So, hi everyone. Um, this is a little later than I usually film. I usually try to film on the weekends, but this was a busy weekend. It was my birthday weekend. Um, which wasn't really that ridiculous because, um, we're keeping it low key because we're still in a pandemic and although 32 is a fine year, it's not really a milestone birthday, but I still had a good time. I took, um, Friday off as a personal holiday, but mostly that was me running errands, um, you know, going to the bank and buying new pillows for the bed. Um, I did get a new office plant. I got a new... Uh, snake plant. I've been wanting one for a while. Um, kind of the only plant I really wanted to add to my office collection. There's not a ton there. I have one overhead light, so <laughs> you might hear the other cat playing with a yarn bundle. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's not even playing with the yarn that's near him. He's playing with the sleeve that goes around the yarn. Anyway, so, um, Lots of stuff to show you. Lots of starts, lots of haul, um, birthday goodies. Um, so um, I try to organize everything uh, to kind of keep it keep it moving. But uh, we I did finish my clay class, so that has been my Monday night endeavor for the beginning of the year. Um, it was a Christmas present I asked for, so I got to do like an eight week clay class just beginning clay here's here's a lump of mud make it look like a thing um, and the first couple things didn't look like much but I actually did end up with some cute stuff and my friend picked ours up from the studio today um, after everything's been fired and glazed and painted and it's all done I only have one thing to show you from that um, the other stuff I already put in the kitchen because I made some useful things I made a double spoon rest um, a pitcher some plates sort of dishes they're all food safe i don't really know if they have a use but my first one that i've really made first thing is my little kitty and my clay instructor if you can hear that she's you know big into making things rattle i don't know she finds it amusing so there's my little kitty it looks kind of like a um what kind of cat does this look like Himalayan. A Himalayan. Um, so, very pretty. The chunkiness is based off of my little girl cat, but we were uh, in a rush to finish painting stuff, so I didn't get to add as much detail to this because my little girl cat is not a Himalayan. She's like a miniature Maine Coon. I know that doesn't make sense, but if you've seen her, that's what she looks like. So, that finishes up clay class, which means I now have... Monday nights to stitch if I'd like or floss tube or whatever we're going to do. Um, uh, yeah. Because I feel like I've been really busy um, or really tired or both. I don't know. I feel like I haven't made a lot of progress, but I've also started a lot of stuff. So the progress is in, is in fits and bits, but that's fine. And then um, also, so Saturday, I usually stitch in the morning, film, um, and then we do whatever else for the rest of the day. Um, but I had lunch with my mother-in-law, my sister-in-law, and then we went and helped my sister-in-law move a lawnmower into her car and then to her house. So um, not much stitching got done on Saturday. I did have starts though, which was my, Saturday was my birthday. I did have starts and I will show you those after we get through the first bit of whips. Um, I do not believe I worked on the Kadazan at all since I last showed you because I was able to start some other stuff. Um, but I did work a bit on um, the piece that I'm working on for Stitch Asia. 
which is a dimensions kit with Buddha. Um, this is called Purity, Strength, and Truth. Um, just kind of put in some more greens and some more browns this week. Um, doo -doo -doo. So last time you saw this guy, you probably, uh, there may have been a little bit of green, but probably not a lot. So I kind of moved some more of the green up. Um, and then I added in some more of these darker browns because, and some of the lighter browns, because I can kind of connect the dots better when I see the brown bits. Um, so just worked on that maybe one night this week, not a ton, um, cause I was working on other stuff, but Stitch Asia, he's coming along. Um, this is not going to be his forever needle minder. That's for a different project, but it's the one that I had available and yeah, so I'll probably keep working on this um, just for the month of March for Stitch Asia and then once we get into April he'll probably go away for a little while and something else will come in his place. So it doesn't even look, he doesn't even have a head yet. He just has like a half of a chest. Yeah, that's right. So that's that one. Um, I also haven't done hardly any work on my Modern Folk Embroidery. 2021 stitch along um, because it took me a little minute to get into her to finish February I took a couple days off before I even started March's bit and I know that March's bit has stitched up much more quickly for folks but um, again I got distracted by other things but I did put a little work in there it's out of its um, Q snap right now so here's the whole kit and caboodle going on there. She looks pretty good. So that's the March section that I've worked on. Um, I might put some some stitches into this. I don't, I don't know if tonight or not. I don't feel like I'm fussing with a Q-snap. But coming along, I will focus on getting that done this month though. Um, that way I can stay on track or I don't know, not get as behind. Although we are heading into even more busyness. We've got a busy weekend this coming weekend and a very busy weekend after that so it is what it is and then we slow down and we don't have anything else going on so plenty of stuff to work on um okay now I think those are my only two whips that I worked on because I had a bunch of starts I had three starts I think I can count three um I showed y'all the haul for Bach Tower um, when I went to our local needle workshop, grabbed all the floss and the fancy floss. Um, we spent like two and a half hours in there just kind of um, chit-chatting, catching up, um, going through everything. And then I think the very next day my fabric arrived. So I was able to start. And that was really exciting um, because this is a different, uh, a different thing for me. So Bach Tower is um, a design that I um, have made myself. If you're, if you're new around here, I have um, created a few different designs of historic architecture um, of, uh, in Florida currently. So the Ka design is another piece that I've worked on. You can check some older floss tubes to see the progress on that. That's also a free pattern available for download. If you check out any of those other videos, the download link is right down below. Um, this is my second pattern. This is Bach Tower. Right now, it's not going to look like much because not only is it, a, is it a start, it's also on 25 count Lugana, which is the tiniest count that I've ever worked on. Um, and it's on storm clouds, I think, storm clouds. So 25 count storm cloud. And we have a start, people. Um, I'm trying to see if y'all can see the, the pattern here. Let me actually, so I wanted um, kind of a sky-like pattern um, as a backdrop. And this is going to be way more fabric than I will need at all for this project. But there's this. You can barely see the pattern on this from this light. Oh my goodness. Hmm. Anyway, very light gray storm. It's one of their, I believe it's one of their printed patterns. So it's not on the back just on the front in this storm cloud. But um, for the piece itself, I started in the bottom left-hand corner so I could 
work my way to the center and this is actually only going to be about as wide as this and then real tall <laughs> so we have the very bottom start of let me get in here i don't know if you guys can see that bit of the garden so it's a tiny bit of bushes and then this is the tower this is the start of the tower which is what i wanted to get to um that's a pretty decent look of the colors there um, before I added this darker bit in here, my husband said it looked like a vacuum cleaner. So there we go. There's still some vacuum cleaner vibes going on. <laughs> so this is in, um, some, the DMC and then I have it charted two different ways. You can do it all DMC or you can do it with some fancy floss. And I'm doing this, this lighter, lighter ish mauve is, um, Purple Haze by Weak Style Works. And I'm loving it. It's a very subtle variegation. Um, but the other ones I have are, are well, should be more prominent. Um, I got lots to go because there's lots of teeny tiny stitches. Um, this will probably be um, a Sunday stitch for me when we are at the in-laws hanging out because the lighting is much better there and I can really just kind of get into it. Um, but yeah, I'm excited that Bach Tower is available. Um, color corrected if y'all want to check that out it's in my etsy shop um you guys can watch the progress here while you figure out if you want to get it or not that's totally fine too but i'm quite pleased with this uh so that's start number one now this is one of my um birthday presents that my husband got for me for my birthday and um quite excited another challenge piece sort of and it is Japan by Faye Governor her skyline series um, however I'm not doing it on the white I'm doing it on black Ada because I think almost all of her skyline pieces look amazing on uh, the black fabric um, Rome London um, all of them love it so this is stitched uh, single strand over 18 count Ada and I don't usually stitch in single strand although I had Bach Tower that I'm doing is a single strand and I needed to reteach myself how to do a single strand loop start and I was trying to figure that out uh, Saturday morning by watching some of the tutorials that I've watched before, but I kept getting distracted by all manner of things, including, you know, cats, breakfast, showering. And so even though it's a start, it's a teeny tiny start. It's just a little baby start. Um, <laughs> it's like at the bottom of page three or something. Um, but yeah, so I got it in my like 14 by 14 Q snap. It's really long. It's really not much more uh, tall than this, but it's a start. <laughs> um, and it's like a lime green, so very, very happy for this one. Long, long-term project, most likely. <laughs> um, you guys are like, oh my gosh, all this progress and everything just looks like amoebas on the fabric, <laughs> and then. Probably was one of the cooler uh, birthday things to happen is um, I kept talk talking to y'all about this Mirabilia that I got, Scent of Old Roses, and I've had the floss for it and the bead kit um, and the pattern since I think January. And um, I ordered the fabric from Fabrics by Stephanie, knowing that there was going to be a long wait and there was a long wait and I feel really bad for hand dyed dying people because the supply chain is apparently crazy. But finally, I was, I was looking at the, our mail tracking thing and I thought this was going to be here on Monday. So, or today, um, but obviously it got here earlier than that because I'll also show you a start. Um, but yeah, it arrived early on my birthday. So I had a birthday start of my Mirabilia. So this is Centifold Roses. Um, Nora Corbett, one of the fancy ladies. Um, this one has a bunch of whisper thread, 
in the uh, pattern in her coat like around the edges there but so I was excited to start that um, and this is a 16 count Ada hand dyed by Fabrics by Stephanie in the colorway Melody and this is my start right in the middle there you can kind of see some of the, the patterning there that's that's nice you can see the, like almost almost like a galaxy going on but super light a very lovely neutral with some pinks and yellows I think it's gonna really pick up notes in the dress once I get in there so um, there's my start one little patch um, I actually had to frog all this after the first night because I had added an extra column which I did with um, beside the still water as well so I need to learn how to count <laughs> but hey it's a start um, I'm really happy to start this one uh, I love having getting a fancy lady going um, my husband right now is working on his fancy lady on his Athena that y'all saw last last floss tube floss tube before one of those you saw his so he's working on that and he's been knitting up a storm so y'all saw the hat he made for his the first hat ever that he made for himself the other week um, and he had a little bit of that cake left so guess we're gonna get on to finishes because I didn't have any but my husband had some finishes this week <laughs> so he was you know needles a flying a blaze to finish this in time technically for my birthday but he made me a hat in kind of a slouchy hat um it's like it's another free pattern from Ravelry um you know what it was called uh rock hat maybe rock hat um, you can fold the, the brim up there. The Karen cake is red velvet. Um, that's what he made the other one in, but you hardly saw any of the red. So this one you see the, the dark red and then even this brighter red. Um, doo -doo -doo. And yeah, so it's kind of a slouchy hat. Of course, we're back in, the, we're already into spring weather. Like it's never going to be cold again, ever. But look at that, y'all. Look at that hat. Rock cap. Rock cap is what it is called on Ravelry. Um, and it has uh, your ribbing. I'm learning the knitting terms, guys. Ribbing here and then the moss stitch is this main bit here that gives it all this texture. So yeah, he did this again. Uh, he started it last Sunday evening and finished it late Friday night to give it to me for my birthday. Ta -da! And yeah awesome he's doing great now he started a scarf and he started another hat and he has plans for all the socks and uh yeah but he had another finish as well not just knitting uh this is actually <laughs> this is the husband's work of the week that's finished um he got a couple samplers when we were on our honeymoon in maine last august and he finished this when we were up there but here's his little sampler, his little one. <laughs> so he finished this last August, like in two seconds. But he wanted to get some finishes in. And so he um, was working on this over the weekend. This is the early American sampler. Right there. Um, we picked it up from the gift shop at the Old Fort in Augusta. Um, which was one of the better tours of a museum that I've had. Our tour guide was awesome. Um, so, uh, David quickly finished this. He's not a huge fan of samplers, especially alphabets, because he knows how to spell his ABCs. So, but he finished this. Um, he only did a couple changes, um, down here, mostly for the date. He swapped it out for 2020, because that's when he started it. Um, and up here, these X's were charted for black, but he switched them out to the darker green. So yeah, really quick stitch for him. Um, he stitched it in hand. I don't think he ever put it in a hoop. No, nope, just all in hand. Um, but yeah, and I think he plans on just framing this, um, as a finish whenever we start fully finishing objects. Um, 
we'll probably wait for some sort of coupon from Michaels or something. <laughs> or look to see, you know, who does finishes and stuff. Okay. Oh, goodness. Uh, we're not done yet, y'all. But we're actually making good progress. Um, so we've done whips. We've done starts. We've done the husband's work of the week. And finishes. Now... I showed you some of the haul that came in just like on time for my birthday. Um, but I had a couple other things in the mail on the way that kind of get classified in there as well. This is the birthday week celebration. And that would be, oh, just in case y'all haven't seen, this is what the pattern looks like for Bach Tower if you're looking to see kind of what the end product looks like. It probably helps if you've never heard of it or never seen it. So when I was talking about Bach Tower, I was talking about this bad boy. Um, okay, so I had, what do I think is like the coolest thing here? Um, this is pretty cool. So um, I've been hemming and hawing about what Victorians across America or Debbie Patrick to start on. Um, I have like all of them favorited in my Etsy profile or whatever, all the um, pattern downloads. You know, dozens are available, but um, I think this is cool because I actually found a kit uh, available. Um, and I was like, well, that's as good as any to start. So, of course, this is in. Sorry for the crinkles, guys. You just can't see because all the letters in the front. Um, so, I was able to score a kit for myself for decent. Decent moolahs. I don't even know where this thing's sitting at. Off of Mercari. You know, guys ever use that um, resale service? And it is. Ta da! This is from the Historic Houses 1 series. Apparently, it was limited edition. Um, this is the Mark Hopkins residence. I went down the whole rabbit hole reading about this stuff. Oh boy. So, um, it's a kit. Look at that. It's like the original kit. As far as I can tell, I haven't actually opened it, opened it, but I mean, it looks, it looks original. Um, but yeah, so this is this huge mansion out on the West coast that burned to a crisp in the 1920s. It was built by this guy, Mark Hopkins. He was like a, a railroad magnet out there. So he was you know, fabulously wealthy. And his wife lived here. Her name was Mary. So it was Mark and Mary. Uh, she lived in the house for a little bit and then she died. And then it became maybe a school for a little bit. Um, and it survived the San Francisco 1906 fire or earthquake. 1906, I think, huge earthquake earthquake and it survived it survived that it did not however survive the great fire that followed the for three days afterwards burnt just burnt because it was all wood burnt to the ground but this is this huge thing and and so mark marky boy here he was super thrifty he was totally fine living in like a little cottage and saving his money and just being a businessman but mary was like can we please have a big pretty house and so she got what she wanted um, so there are, there's a decent amount of photos of this online if you check it out. Um, she, I kept following her thing. She ended up marrying, like, the, the design, interior designer of this thing. So, you know, maybe some scandal there. I don't know. Um, his name was Edward Searles. Searles? 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 I don't know. And he was also, so then she died and he inherited all her money and all her property. And they'd also like cut out uh, her step, not her stepson, but her adopted son out of the will. More scandal. But that guy, he built a bunch of castles, castle-like mansions um, up and down the East Coast. But I didn't see any cross-stitch patterns of them. But yeah. So that's awesome that my first um, Victorians Across America slash Debbie Patrick is a full kit. So... 
Uh, I'll pull it out a little bit later. I'm not ready to start this. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm not ready to start this. I got plenty of stuff going on. But that was a really cool find. Um, and just on a resale site that I used to sell like purses and shoes and stuff. But I looked up the cross tag, cross tag, cross stitch tag or whatever. And there's tons of stuff. Um, so I also got this from Mercari. Not that, but this. Which was a kind of a grab bag that this lady was selling of just not quite remnants, but um, bits of fabric. So this is a lovely, I don't think she even knows what the counts are on this. It's a lovely blue. In teeny tiny. <laughs> That's the, the counts, teeny tiny. So obviously some sort of... Actually looks like an even weave, doesn't look like a linen, but it's this, that's a pretty accurate color picking up right there, just that kind of cornflower blue. Um, so that's nice, we'll figure out what we wanna do with that. What we wanna do. And then another um, bit, uh, a little bigger, a little larger, green. Some green. This is actually, this actually looks like linen, it's got some slubbing in it. Um, also a little teeny tiny, but We'll figure it out. Um, it's a really nice, that's, that's pretty accurate right there. Um, pretty nice muted green. So I think doing stuff maybe in, in white and ecru on this would be nice. So maybe a sampler or something, I don't know. But what I really wanted from that pack was, let me see, it doesn't really matter. This fun guy. So I've seen more of these. I already forgot what they're called when they have the square and then the pattern around the side. But it has this little green floral thing going around. Um, this is like an 18 count or something. Might, maybe even 16 count. So perfect for me. Um, and I've seen some of y'all like cataloging my stitches um, and Michelle, not Michelle Bendy, but a different Michelle, maybe. Um, anyway, I've seen some folks doing this cute little St. Patrick's Day girl. Um, with like a little white dress and like maybe clovers. So I might look at that maybe, or who knows? And it, that also wouldn't be like an immediate start, maybe like a next year start, but I don't know. So that was cool because I got all three of these for like 18 bucks. Because with Mercari, if you like an item, you kind of follow it, sort of, maybe how like eBay works. I don't trust eBay anymore. But um, then people can privately offer you a discount if they'd like to kind of encourage the sale. And I was like, yes, encourage me. So I got those. And then one last bit. Excuse me. Oh no, you're fine. Sorry, that's a kitty cat. This is for a future product project that I am uh planning on starting on memorial day which i will have off from work which is nice and this is a 32 count mushroom lugana that's opalescent there we go see some of the shinies in there kind of you can see some of the shinies and this is from another Etsy shop. Who is it from? Let's give them some shout outs. Give them some love. Silk Weaver Fabrics. So, um, sir, <laughs> sir, what are you doing? So big, long mushroom, sparkly Memorial Day start. So. Stay tuned for more after these commercial breaks. That's not true. We've been watching a lot of uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000. So we are programmed to have commercial breaks with the boys. And that's okay. <laughs> My husband's chuckling over there. Um, all right. I think I think we made it through, guys. Huh? Oh. Uh, husband has a haul that he, he wants to show off. Okay, so this is with his knitting stuff. Um, he's been waiting to get these, and he's he was jazzed. So he's got some 
really fancy interchangeable circular knitting needles and these are bamboo uh, they are takumi as you can see right there nope see right there um i imagine everything you see in this picture is what he got in the box <laughs> my cat's trying to climb under the couch there's no room for him under the couch but um yeah he's been wanting to get this thing because he wants to have all the options available um he's been slowly but surely working up his knitting stash of both tools and fibers i don't know why i said it so weird like that fibers <laughs> but that was his big haul of the week i believe that's all, we got. that's all we got we showed you all the cool yarns and stuff last video um Okay. He was also waiting until he, he had a coupon. We are officially proud sh stockholders of Joanne Fabrics. Because um, they went they went public last Friday or something. Friday? Yeah, Friday. yeah last Friday. So, um, as we were driving to lunch, I think he bought some shares. And then when I got to lunch, I, I bought one whopping share of Joanne Fabrics. Uh, so that way when we walk in we can be like excuse me shareholders coming through and they're just gonna be like what please please <laughs> but um yeah so expect tons of knitting from him maybe next week we'll show a whip on his um whip update on one of his knitting projects um because he's got to finish a hat by the 29th really he should finish it probably earlier than that, but he's got until then to finish it. Um, and then he started on a scarf, and yeah, so, okay. This actually wasn't even as long as some of my other videos, uh, despite all of the crap that I have around me. Um, now I wonder if I'm missing anything, but I don't think I am. Um, plans. All right, so I, start, I, I showed y'all how I track my stuff in my planner. I'm officially out of highlighter colors. I don't have enough for all of the whips I have, which probably means I need to have fewer whips, even though I still ended up buying more highlighters. I was literally looking at a pack of like 12 different colors. And I was like, no, you probably need to just calm down. And I mean, sure, I guess so. So, <laughs> the, hang on, let's get, Let's get, everybody liked the cat last time. There we go, there's the boy, here's the baby. All right, so plans are to focus on finishing the Modern Folk Embroidery Stitch Along. Um, I should put in some more stitches into the Cottage On and finish the tower on that because that's kind of the big showpiece of that one. Um, I like to get more stitches into Japan. That way it looks like anything other than 10 stitches. Um, and like I said, I'll keep doing Stitch Asia for March. Uh, and yeah. I am still working on my next design, which is the Andy Pfeiffer Chapel. He's got... <laughs> um, which is, it's... I started it. It's not, it wasn't behaving for a while, so I put her, I put her down. Um, I guess I have to put this boy down. <laughs> That's Giuseppe, by the way. Um, <laughs> so I'm putting a pause on that, putting a pin in that, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but that'll be the next one that I put up in the, in the shop. Um, and then I think after I have the three patterns in there, I will call it an official grand opening. Can you really officially grand open your Etsy shop? Uh, yeah. So, thanks for hanging around. Thanks for checking in on me. Thanks for everyone who wished me a happy birthday. That was awesome. Uh, thank, hello to all of my birthday buddies, everybody who said that they were also celebrating in and around last weekend. Um, we're just gonna have some dinner around here. Um, husband is making uh hamburger steak 
Is that what they, the official thing? Hamburg hamburger steak, hamburger steak. Hamburger steak. It's like the way the Japanese folk make a hamburger steak. It's not quite a Salisbury steak, although he is adding mushrooms because he's making like an amazing red wine reduction sauce. Um, so I'm excited about that. But I'm about to get here set up st stitching, stitching, witching. And yeah, we will actually be headed back up to the in-laws tomorrow or Wednesday to do more gardening, harvesting of radishes, harvesting of sweet, sugar, sorry, sugar snap peas, maybe sewing up other things. Who even knows? Um, it's springtime in Florida, so it's already hot. And yeah, good times. Good times all around, y'all. So until next time, we'll see you. Uh, have a good week. <coughs> We've made it through Monday. That's really the hardest part, right? And y'all be good. See you next time. Well, just another bowl.